Hi, I'm Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. I hope you like the video. Please give it thumbs up and comment in the comment section. That will help my little business grow. I love to create and do all different kinds of styles, rustic and farmhouse, industrial and small home decor too. I hope you enjoyed the video and learn lots of different techniques from me and I inspire you to create yourself. If you're local to me, I also sell. I'm in Chilliwack, BC, Canada. And if you are local, please stop by and say hi. If you're anywhere else in the world, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. I'm Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. Oh, hello and welcome. I'm Julie from Rustic Cottage Co. And this week's video is going to be another craft one. I hope you enjoy. Again, this week, I'm going to go back to a little bit of basics and uh, do something I have done before, but many, many years ago. And uh, I obviously haven't done it in this country. I don't have one in this country and I'm doing it for myself for my own room. So hope you enjoy kind of Go along with me with this little craft and seeing how it fits nicely into my home digger decor into my room. Now a little update on as some of you may know some of you are new to the channel and welcome hope you enjoy and don't forget to subscribe. Um, I've moved recently two and a half months now I've been here back in the UK I moved back to my own country of where I was born and grew up and um, when I was 18, I moved, got married and moved to Canada. I lived in Canada for 30 plus years and all of a sudden, a little bit of a drastic decision, um, two and a half months ago, I moved back to England. Um, some of it, a little bit of more personal reasons, um, but generally I had to escape a little bit of a, an emotionally uh, abusive situation in the marriage that just wasn't healthy for me and I am now taking the time one day at a time getting myself healthy and happy so that is my whole intention of my life right now that's my main goal and doing crafts and painting certainly helps me do that and the other side of it too my parents are getting a little older now, my dad's 90 90 years old and my mom 82 and obviously over the next few years I'll be helping them out more and more and uh, it's great that I'm living close to them and being with them and be able to help out and also my sister doesn't live that far away so I can rekindle some very much love and affection giving and receiving from my sister and spend some quality time over the next few years of my life with her and grow old to be together in the same town it's just something that I've always wanted to do so that's great now mind you not been very easy I literally one suitcase in my hand if you look back over the videos in the past it actually shows you I had one suitcase put some clothes in a little bit of each couple of items of each season clothing into a suitcase and a couple of items of ornaments that are actually I passed down to me from generations that I've tried to treasure and still try to treasure and brought back and uh, that was it that's all I brought with me I lost my car I lost my house um, I gave up my pets um, most hardest thing ever I gave up well didn't give up but my grown daughters and my grandchildren are in Canada haven't given them up I'm not saying I've given them up but obviously don't spend as much quality time with them now it's just FaceTime with them so that's the worst and the hardest part um, and just you know as I say I, I have starting from scratch I have nothing <laughs> um, all I can do is smile in some ways but starting it's been a hard journey and it's continuing to be hard 
I literally had to come to this country and straight away get a job because I came with just a small amount of money and one suitcase. Um, I walked away from a lot and uh, it was the healthy thing for me to do, but it's been very difficult. So yeah, I'm working full time. I'm doing my crafts that I love and uh, I'm just building one thing at a time. I, you know, I, I don't have a car. I don't have many things like there's a lot of stuff I don't have. I mean, just cl some clothing, shoes, even I had to, you know, straight away go to the, uh, the store and get just items like, you know, personal care items that I just didn't bring with me because I wanted to fill that one case with stuff that was the right thing to bring. I mean, why take space up for toothpaste when toothpaste isn't that expensive? So you can get it here. Why put it in one suitcase, you know? So things like that I had to quickly think of, you know? But yeah, I, I all the furniture, loads of clothes, all my life I left behind. But I don't dwell on being poor me. I'm trying to be positive. I'm doing one day at a time and I am continually doing my crafts because that's what makes me smile. So let's enjoy this week's craft and get going and tell me what you think. Again, going back to basics, but it's nice because I want it for my room because I miss having one for my room and you can go back and ask questions on how to's. Let's get going. So with this basic, this craft that I'm going to be doing for you, um, I usually do these with hardback covered books and I take the cover off and just paint the hardback books. Now, what I decided to do instead of going to the thrift store and getting some hardback books, I thought I wanted to go a little smaller. So I decided to pick up some softback books from the thrift store, but ones that had thick sides. So I needed three. I picked up these three and I'm going to go with these. Now I've got a small room that I'm decorating, so I wanted to go on a smaller scale. And I thought, why not? Let's try it with actual softback books. Because one of the things that most people have, not me, but most people in their basements or in their, you know, hanging around is a lot of these softback books that you've read and read and read. You try and pass them on to friends, but they've got the same ones. You put, give them, donate them to thrift stores, that's for sure. Um, but you quite often, most of you will find three hard uh, softback books in your home that you can literally paint today. So you don't have to buy anything. So let's get painting these. Now what I'm going to do is paint the top one on the top and on the side. The middle one, I'm just going to paint the middle side section. And then the bottom one, I will be painting this, the, this part here, the bind and the bottom. So they're all going to have the white chalk paint. I'm going to get painting on them and uh, wait for them to dry. So I'm using my white linen chalk paint. It is on a shiny surface, so you want to take your time and just paint over the whole of the bottom of your bottom book. When you do your stack in the end, this one will be on the bottom. Um, take your time, let it dry fully. As you don't want it to crack, um, you want the paint to stay on there. And also on this one, you are going to be painting the edge of each of the books. So just one coat on the edge as well. The middle book, all we need to do is paint the end of it, the bind of it here. So we're just going to do one coat here over the bind of it. It doesn't matter if you get it onto the sides, you just don't need to paint the sides. Once it's in a stack, that will be covered anyway. So one coat on that one. We can actually stand that one up if it will let us and let it dry that way. And then on this last one here, just painting the top. One coat on the top. 
Now, if you are buying books for this kind of thing, rather than using what you have just at hand, then I would suggest you try and look for books that are lighter in colour. Reds, browns and blacks are harder to paint over, especially with white paint. It would take more paint um, to do more layers to actually hide those strong colours. But other than that, any book will do if you are not buying, just use what you've got. If you're finding it very hard to go over them, you could always go over with a dark colour first and then do the white on top of that um, because paint paints easier on paint than it does on anything else. So we're going to let those dry and uh, then go and put a second co coat over the whole thing and let that dry. So I'll get back to you in soon. I have two coats now on the books and just letting that completely dry, which would be a good way to do it would be overnight. So I'm just going to leave it for at least a few hours and see what it's like, but maybe overnight as well. We'll see. And uh, just uh, then get on to the next stage. So my books are dry and I'm ready for stenciling. And what I'm going to be using is this stencil here. Welcome to my our farmhouse now i'm going to do the middle one first i do not have the correct stencil brush so i'm going to take my time and just do the best i can so i'm going to get a little bit of paint on just part of this brush and then dab some off you don't want it too wet you want it very dry and this middle part i just want to put the little bit of words to our on it so I'm just going to put that first and then I'm going to let that dry and I'm ready to do the other two now this one is the top one so this one's going to have welcome on it. So put this one in place. And again, I'm just going to put the paint on this side of me. And just a little bit at a time, just dab down. Not too wet with the paint or else it will seep under. And I'm just using part of the brush to create a smaller brush, just to make it a little bit easier to work with. also do a swirling method as well. I'm just going to go over that E again. So gently take it off and let that dry. And we have now the bottom one, which I'm going to put farmhouse on. Take your time with it, especially if you don't have the right stuff to do it with. Do take your time with it. Offload so you don't have too much wet paint 
and then just go over the stencil either dabbing or swirling or a combination even making sure you're getting all the crevices to get it a nice lettering and then take it off gently and you have it finished let it dry and we'll go from there so i've already put a little motif on top as i wanted something a little bit on top and now i'm going to just give it a rustic look again with my pad and ink just going around the edges giving it an old look and then around each of the sides as well. So going down the side on each of them. And the last one too, going down the sides and along the bottom. And that old kind of look to it now finishing it you can finish it in many different ways how i like to finish it is put some twine around wrap it around or i also like to um, put some flowers on different things to make it look uh, finished off it's time for staging Welcome to Rustic Cottage Co. I'm Julie. 